Nearly said stresses me out. I'm not stressed. I'm a bit concerned on their behalf. And I will say, Tim, if you do the math, maths, stop being American, if you do the maths um, around what they've asked for for the pace as Stu McSwain slots straight in behind the pacemaker, it doesn't quite add up. So they've asked them to run kind of 234 kilometers, and that would get them to 3K and 742. And if you carried on at that pace for the next couple of laps, they'd have to run about two. 22 to 23 last K. Yeah, no, I worked out this, this steady pace, Stephen. They need to run yeah. about 60.7 per lap. So they're this... getting near 61 per lap here. Well, yeah. it'll be a lot quicker than the requested time. You're right, 7.42. That would obviously be 7.37.5. So yes. I don't know who will be up for this here. Uh, so uh, my point is, they said their pace is going at what should be the meeting record pace. But this is too slow. Yeah. You really should be under 740, I think. Yeah. And then hope that you get a good race from that point on. Because when we always assume the fourth K goes a bit slow and yes, the fifth K goes a bit quicker. But hey, let's wait and see. So the pacemakers have got the lights to follow. And the guys will, I'm sure, slot in quite nicely to that pace. Aragawi right at the back. Um, he was uh, initially due to be taking part in the half marathon, Great North Run, at the last weekend. And there's another big one this weekend. Might talk about more of that when Inga Britson's running, but um, he's chose to come to the Diamond League final, which is great. So the Olympic 10,000 meter silver medalist at the back, and they're well strung out at this pace. 62 through that 400 meters, although we've, we've already completed 600. And that's already much too slow, Steve. That's 7.45 pace, 62 seconds per lap. I was chatting to Kajelcha, who's in third place behind Stewie McSwain, who He's almost giving me, making me wonder whether or not he's going to be an unofficial uh, second pace maker, Sui, there in the purple in second place. But in third place, uh, Kijelcha said he's uh, still got one eye on this track season, but very much on a, a half marathon he's running in Spain in the uh, middle of October. That's what he fancies. And I said, aren't you getting tired now? He said, yes, yes, but I can't rest until after that half marathon. So some of these fellas are still very up for it. And, I suspect he'll want to make this a real good test of his strength here, Kijelcha, even though we know he's a, he's a great finisher. Yeah, I, I think, too, at some point they're going to take a, a, a bit of a rain check on this and work out what they're doing, because already, even at this pace, which is a little slower than we'd um, asked for, uh, Kameli's just moving up. I was going to say Kameli and Aragawi at the back looks as though they're struggling to stay with it. Gebriwet right at the back as well. That might be smart, though. You know, they might be thinking, OK, they're not going to go super quick here. Anyway, we'll um, inform you of uh, how that progresses as we move for our first look at the women's high jump. We do indeed, yes, Gerashenko. Going here at uh, 1 meter 84. Oh, and she should pop over that. Shared the bronze medal in Paris, fourth in Tokyo three years back. She's still in very good form as the Ukrainian number two. Of course, the Olympic champion is her compatriot, Yaroslav Mahuchik. Men's discus getting going as well. We had the women's discus earlier on. This is uh, Matt Denny, the Australian. What a year for him as well. We just saw a shot of the discus uh, just uh, getting the chalk to try and make sure the, the grip is good. So early stages in the men's discus. But Matt Denny with an excellent start. That, I'm just, <laughs> look, that's the 70 meter line. In my head, I'm thinking 65 meter line. Whoa, that's a meeting record straight off. First it's a, throw. It's a meeting record, a personal best, and a national record for Matt Denny. What an opener against the best guys that are out there, including Alekna, the world record holder, who's fouled in the first round. Wow, well, I said he's having a great year, Olympic bronze medalist, and uh, he's heading at the moment early, as I said, but leading in the uh, discus. So leading in the 5,000, these two guys still sticking with the lights just about, but everybody well stretched out behind at this pace. It was 2.34, as asked for, through the first 1,000 metres. So they're heading for 5.8, or that's the target, and if they stick with the lights, they should be on that. I think you're right, Stewie McSwain would be, must be there to help push the pace along. I know he's uh, he had a... I think he fell, he told me, in uh, Zurich. He pulled out, he was a, He didn't start in the 3,000 metres there, and I saw him afterwards, and he said, oh, I fell and I hurt my hip. Um, so, obviously, that's OK, settled down. And, well, uh, but he's here to do a job tonight, looks like. That was another lap way outside 62, I say way outside, 62-17. So, yeah, they were just watching a good competitive 
Diamond League final 5,000 metres here, Steve. I think we can forget about anything sub 740 at least tonight. I'm sure we'll see sub 13 minutes. That's uh, fairly ordinary these days, but as that pacemaker pulls out after five laps, it's 508 at 2,000 metres. We were really looking for something around 504. Well, well ex except this is what they set. I think what you and I keep saying, they should have been about 504 if they want to go as quick as suggested. So Stewie's looking around, seeing who's here. Well, he's still got the same folks for comfort, Kajelcha, Bekele, but Gebrewet has moved up a little bit, and one or two are getting tailed off as we have our first sight of Mahuchik, the Olympic champion and new world record holder this year. We do indeed, yeah, Mahuchik. Opening height, 188. Boom, thank you very much. World champion in Budapest last year as well. She's only lost one competition this year. That's when she came second at the World Indoors in Glasgow to uh, Nicola Olislagas of uh, Australia, who is in this competition. Patterson is there as well, another Australian world champion in 22. Karashenko, the bronze medalist who shared that bronze with Patterson in Paris. Top field in that eye jump. Well, pressure on now, and McSwain having to get them through to 3K, maybe a bit further if he can, and he's trying to hang on to the lights there. We've lost Quemoy, the Olympic silver medalist. Aragawi just moving up one place at the back, just getting ahead of Jacob Krop. Gebrewet now in the middle of the pack, but it's been Kajelcho who's looked the one most keen with Bikili behind him, and McSwain... Uh, McSwain just looking and checking that they're right on him, and they are. But as we keep saying, that's a 61.5. It has picked up slightly, around a 61.7, 61.5. But there's, as we uh, see, Duplantis, Tim, for the first time. We do indeed, Steve, yes. And uh, Duplantis, 5 metres 92 for the world record holder. Yeah, lovely. He was asked yesterday at his press conference if he thought he could set a world record here, and a few people we're uh, thinking that's kind of a harsh question a he's not a machine and b is we knew it was going to be cold and pretty wet through uh, today this first of two competition days of these diamond league finals but 592 there his opener looks very comfortable indeed i say his opener he came in at 562 and pops over 592 as well all change in the 5000 stewie mcsain had done what he could do didn't quite get them to 3k they're approaching that point now but kajelcha has picked up the mantle has picked up the pace a little bit as well and then the Kaylee right behind him. Kip Career, Arik always now moved up. Kemboy on the curb, Gebri Wet in that group. So those six now just pulling away a little bit. And that, again, it's the target they asked for, 742 through 3K. But the question is now, what happens in this 4K if they get it to get anywhere close down under 1240? And that's a tall order. This K has got to be pretty quick. Well, it seems, Steve, that they've got to 3K feeling pretty fresh. I mean, Kajelch there is bouncing along with that head-bobbing style of his, looking very comfortable indeed. He's definitely injected some tempo here. It'll be interesting to see what this lap is. I bet he was down there in the 60 range because he's flying here and he's beginning to stretch them. And amongst the those who are working hard to live with this, are Aragawi back in fourth place in the orange because Kajelch here has turned the screw very, substan very substantially. Kajelcha leads, Bakili behind them, Gebri West, these three just pulling clear of Aragar, who's doing his best to try and hang on, but that gap just starting to grow a little bit. Then we've got Kemboy and Kip Korea, the two Kenyans, together. But at the moment, it's all Ethiopia at the front, and Kajelcha is forging on, as Tim said, he looks good, he looks strong, and looks as though he's heading or oh, looking behind there, wondering, can I have a bit of help here? Because we're setting this up. And if we can run a fast last kilometre, that meeting record is possible. It would have to be a real burn up over the last couple of laps. So these guys are capable of that. So Bikili says yes, he takes the invitation. Kajelcha asked him to come and help. Gebrewet not so interested in that. A little bit of slowing there while they were having a bit of a chat. It's meant that Aragawi's got back onto those three. Well, I got them going through, Steve, with four laps to go in 8.41.5, so they'd have to run 3.58 for the last four laps, which is uh, maybe asking too much, even of fellas of this calibre. And that pace has certainly slackened. Kajelcha really bombed it for about 600 metres, but it's eased back. There you go, 62.7. Well, they're watching the lights disappear all of a sudden, and you can see that not only 
has Aragawi joined, but Kip Career is now getting close as well. So now all of a sudden there was three, then four, now five. And uh, yeah, the time has gone. I mean, we did think it, you know, they, it, it was never really on in terms of a meeting record, it, not the pace they were going. But this fourth K is always the one where you, you don't want to, you know, Kijelcha was not prepared just to hang out there in front and push it on for everybody else. Saragawi comes on the outside, the 10,000 meter Olympic silver medalist. And will he look to maybe try and move things on? And indeed, it's the Kenyan, Nicholas Kipkarir, who's just reminding them that he's still there as well. And they'll come down this time with two laps to go. It's going to be a burn up between these five. Well, it is, and three abreast now. Nobody really wants to take it on, but why not lead? There's not a lot of breeze in the arena. I think conditions are actually pretty good for 5,000 meter running, if you don't mind, uh, 10 or 11 degrees centigrade. But these fellas are moving well now, and uh, it's almost become a middle distance race, really, Steve. Three or four of them look so fresh at 3,000. This will be fascinating, this next 700. Well, Kip Career's done this before. He has won the Diamond League final before. You wouldn't have had him down. He's not been running as well this year. Had a disappointing Olympic Games, but he's forging on with the pace here, trying to set it up because he knows how quick Kajelcha Gebriwet can be, although Gebriwet has just dropped off a little bit. So at the front, Aragawi pushing. Bekele follows. Kajelcha comes around the outside. Arag uh, excuse me, Gebriwet still there. And although he's not as young as he used to be, I hope you won't mind me saying that, he's still got pace in his legs, so they're coming around to take the bell. Five of them still with a chance, but Aragawi stretching them. Well, they hit the bell, now Aragawi has got a meter lead, and he's going to make them work for this one. There's no easy win here tonight. Keeps glancing around himself, he's got that strange style, forward-leaning, flailing with the arms. But Kelly, the only one who looks even close to being able to match him is Steve. Gebriwet's coming, though. Kijelcha's gone, couldn't change the pace, and that was an early burst from Aragawi. Was it too early? Did he do too much too soon on this last lap? Because Gebriwet was swift to go past Kijelcha. I think he was waiting for Kijelcha to get on terms. He wasn't going to do that, but he very, very quickly closed the gap, and now he's sitting on the shoulder of Aragawi, so these two clear away from Bikili. And Gebri Wet now trying to get it going, but Aragawi's left something left. He's given it his all here, and it's going to be enough. He's going to take the win. He'll be the Diamond League champion. 12.43 in the end. Really big last lap, something in around 53 seconds, a 155 last 800 metres. We said it would be a burn-up over the last couple of laps. Not sure that we would have put Aragawi as the favourite in those conditions, but he did enough. Looked as though Gebri Wett might have him coming into the home straight, but he missed the jump. He had to work hard to get back to Aragawi, and that might have just taken the edge off him over the last 100 metres. So well done, Aragawi, beautifully timed. And if you think, Tim, with three laps to go, four laps to go perhaps in that fourth kilometre, he was not even in that group of three. It was when Kajelcha stopped, slowed, asked Pakili to come round, he got Aragawi, got back on the group, and then after that, his confidence grew. And you know what, Steve? I said sceptically, oh, they need to run 3.58 for the last four laps. I think they've just run about 4.01 for the last three laps. That is fabulous. And Aragawi there, only three athletes have gone quicker than that this year. That was uh, superb finishing from him. It was amazing how much time these fellas can claw back over the last couple of laps when they really put their foot down. I thought that was going to be a 